Previously on Sunboy Online, I consulted a LEGO enthusiast in my mission to find all 12 of the new Muppets minifigures. The journey took us across a variety of locations, but were all of the minifigures predicted accurately? Find out in part 1, and if you're all caught up, let us commence the review. So we return to the Sunboy Online studio where I'm now going to unbox all of the Muppets minifigures. Um, I want to say a big thanks to the mysterious voice of the air for giving us great advice um, and helping to get all of these in one go. I'm going to randomly unpackage them one by one. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all of these figures really so we'll see who we have first. I half opened them in the car as you saw just to check that we definitely did have them because it would have been very disappointing to get home and set up uh, the studio to then realise that we didn't have the full collection and that's what I wanted to show you all. Um, it's why this video has taken a while to come out because I wanted to do it right. So. Oh, it's Janice. <laughs> so, as you know, uh, ugh. okay. So, as you know, Janice was the last uh, figure that we found, and we had to go to a different shop just to find it because it wasn't in Smith's. So, we've got pieces here. I'll um, just put them there so you can see. We've also got this is taped together actually, but it's a. Uh, um, the leaflet, which I imagine has them all. It looks like that would rip if you were to open it though. I think building instructions are hardly required for something like this, so uh, the head slots in, <laughs> or should, to the body, like so. And, uh, I don't want to slot something in the wrong way and be uh, mocked by the Muppet fandom. Okay, so there is, <laughs> oh my god, there is Janice, who has caused us plenty of problems on the base. Ta-da! There is Janice. Okay, so we'll move on very swiftly. It's the chef, Swedish chef by the looks of it. And uh, there's all of his accessories. Oh, that isn't very good, is it? <laughs> it yeah, it looks... Oh, a tomato was just rolled off the table. This is going great. Yeah, but it seems like an appendage, the... the the whisk is stuck. There's the head. It's worth mentioning that the the headpieces for all of the Muppets are brand new and there's clearly been a lot of effort put into them because um, you couldn't really just have the standard Lego head and you know do the Muppets. Um, I think that would have been very cheap but they've kind of gone the full uh, the extra mile and sculpted all of these new pieces whilst incorporating all the pieces as props and stuff like that. So you've got this tomato. Oh, so I didn't realize that the bottom of the of the tomato actually s seems to slot on top of the chef's hand, like so. I had no idea that it did that. Um, yeah, the, um, the Swedish chef is probably a lot of people's favorites and he's definitely a really good looking figure due to the there's the large headpiece with the hat and the head and everything. The accessories are really good and the detail goes all around the uh, around the sides. So next packet who do we have? Oh it's um it's Waldorf. I mean both to start around Waldorf. Um, they're really great. You've got like the, the eyelids and everything. It's just done uh, to perfection, really. None of I don't think any of them look odd um, or have been done wrong. They've pretty much got all of them spot on. I am amazed, genuinely, how we were able to differentiate, like even Staten and Waldorf, who are very similar, just you know through the accessories and stuff like that. There he is standing on his own. We'll put him on his stand. Now I'll reference the leaflet once more. So Waldorf has the uh, a teacup and saucepan in his right hand and the Z kind of board in his left hand. Going on this for 20 minutes. 
Okay, I'm pretty sure that's how it's meant to be done. Yeah, it's kind of at an angle at this point. Um, can't be changed, obviously. So there's Waldorf. Right, next up is... Oh, it's Rolf. I love Rolf. Right, let's get into this. Next to Kermit, Rolf was the one that I really wanted because, I don't know, I've just always liked him. He was Jim's favourite apparently and um, he served as the, the lead for quite a while and I think it's quite an interesting story that over the years after Jim's passing he then kind of took a back seat and became this obscure secondary character that nobody can quite decide whether he is a core character or, you know, sometimes he just doesn't speak and is in the background. So for that reason, I'm glad that um, he's been included in this set. Put his head on there, which goes nicely. I love this head sculpt. It's very... I mean, it's just Rolf in it. And Rolf's accessory is uh, Beethoven's head. See, I swear it's also used by the 12th Doctor in the TARDIS. He has one. So, um, there we go. Cross-universe connections. Okay, Beethoven's head, and he just kind of sits separately uh, to Rolf, you can't really put him on the platform, or whatever, um, so not sure how it will be displayed, probably just like this, with him alongside him. Next one is, okay, looks like Statler, and like I mentioned earlier, Whenever I see this um, Statler figure in particular, uh, the headpiece, I can only think of the door knocker from A Muppet's Christmas Carol. Yeah, I am glad that they've done both Statler and Waldorf, but yet there are some Muppets left out. I'd say probably the most prominently like Dr. Teeth, uh, Sam the Eagle, and Walter from the 2011 film. So we could potentially see a wave two. Um, but I wouldn't count on it, it seems like they've got the very iconic ones out anyway. Oh, and Scooter, of course Scooter, who, speaking of which, this is his only appearance on this very small laptop screen. Now, I think this is a reference to Muppets Now, from what I gather. Um, maybe they thought it was going to be a big success or something. This says to me that there probably won't be a series 2 because they've clearly tried to include Scooter, at least in reference. I think it would be strange to then have a figure of him, but I don't know, anything's possible. So we'll attach this so it goes like this, we can then rotate, and this is the keyboard, which judging from the shape goes this way, the space bar at the bottom and stuff. Just some nice detail. And there is that. It's worth mentioning that um, Statler and Waldorf used a computer in, there was a web series on YouTube, and Statler and Waldorf would kind of heckle stuff online, so I think it's a nice, maybe a nice callback to that as well. In the photograph, he isn't holding the laptop, so I'll just put him like that, but I believe it can be held, or maybe not. <laughs> I thought it could be shoved in the hand, but um, doesn't seem like it, unless he held it from the bottom like this, but that would be very strange. <laughs> um, I'll bring him Waldorf for, a, you know, having them together. And as you can see, uh, the mid Waldorf, uh, his legs, his legs are the smaller type, um, so that you've got that height difference of Statler and Waldorf. Obviously, it is weird just having Muppet kind of merchandise in my opinion or at least figures like this because of the nature of the Muppets they are puppets you know you very rarely see the bottom half of them I think they've done a very good job in representing the correct heights of the Muppets or what they're perceived to be right so next up by the looks of it we have Beaker um, there he is which as you heard the mysterious voice of the air say uh, there were there were lots of beakers, but the strange thing is I imagine a lot of people do want the beaker figure because he is a very popular character Just on his own as a standalone thing um, As well as being you know part of the duo alongside Bunsen 
Obviously, Baker is very defined by his unique shaped head. Once again, captured perfectly just the, the expression of Bega. Uh, the thing is with the Muppets, they have pretty stationary expressions. Although they do, for example, the mouth moves and stuff, you've always got that same look, um, which makes them very recognisable. Once again, captured perfectly here. Yeah, Bega seems to have the standard legs makes him a bit taller and I think Bunsen's are the smaller type once again like Statter and Waldorf these duos kind of have uh, you know the juxtaposing heights that goes really nicely because you've got this grip point here which allows Beaker to hold it and you can put it at a nice angle such as that and it looks like he's terrified at the result which is great and fittingly next up is Bunsen Oh, this looks really nice. That's immediately caught my attention, is this kind of chemistry vibe going on. But that is a really nice looking um, prop there. I'll put this jar in his left hand here. Sorry, chemistry glass, that's probably a better word. That looks really nice there. Try and replicate the poles as close as I can. Uh, it looks as if he's kind of explaining what he's going to do to Bega. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, like the Stadler and Waldorf, I'll quickly put them together because they are, you know, always seen as a duo. And they look really nice alongside one, one another. Right, as we're progressing, we're getting to the bigger characters. So, ooh, that nearly went flying off the table. Fozzie seems to have quite a few pieces, namely this banana here. But uh, the microphone stand seems to be comprised of a lot of pieces. Very similarly to Rolf, you've got this texture in, on the body rather than just being plain brown. And that goes all the way from the legs to the torso, the arms, excluding the head which has the sculpted detail. Uh, that's very nice. There's Fozzy. He's got to be another one of my favourites really. Lightness is captured perfectly. There he is. Oh, you got his neckerchief, hat. He's got his neckerchief and hat, pink nose and everything. Wonderful. We'll put him on his stand to do some stand-up comedy. Well, that was a joke that uh, Fozzie would probably appreciate. So, I'm going to try and construct this thing. This is all very black, so it might not be very visible. There we go. That's not too bad at all. And finally, we'll put the mic in the centre like this. And that is great, look at that, the uh, magic of Lego, we've created a mic stand. Yeah, fozzy has got some of the best accessories, I think that really kind of completes the whole look. Oh, and next, weirdly, we've got Animal. I think he's been kind of uh, mixed up because he was near the end next to Janice in the pile. But, uh, but yeah, he is a very prominent Muppet, probably. He's usually within the top five kind of known Muppets, I think. He's kind of got a huge following of his own, much like uh, Cookie Monster or Elmo or something. So, Whew. now what was I saying about Fozzie? It really seems like these more popular characters have had a lot more thought put into them in terms of accessories and stuff like that, which is very nice to see. It shows that the people behind this know their stuff. First of all, I think I'll put Animal together. That is a fantastic head sculpt. None of them seem to have been modified and used uh, more than once. So they're all unique, which is really, really nice to get 12 uh, figures. And apparently that's not even that large of a wave for Lego minifigures. And there's Animal. Yeah, really iconic Muppets. I'm gonna have to refer to the instructions once more, or at least the picture to see how the drum kit is put together. This thing goes into there. Then we get the red bit. Then the white, which creates the other drum head. Um, this seems kind of loose. Not sure if that's intentional. Okay. That's got to be it. And then there's just a spare of each by the looks of it. The only thing remaining is Animal's drumsticks, which are actually kind of uh, still welded together in the plastic. 
God, all animals been a bit of a nightmare to put together. But there he is, and he looks great. I um, I love that position there where he's got both the drumsticks up. That's that's brilliant. Ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, and quite appropriately, Gonzo's head has just launched across the table. Okay, here is the very distinct and identifiable Gonzo. Or at least his head. As the mysterious disembodied voice was saying, uh, Gonzo is very identifiable due to his large nose. Um, so if any of you are looking for Gonzo in particular, just feel for this thing. I love that he's in his iconic yellow shirt and tie, because Gonzo does change his clothes quite a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure this is how he appeared around the 2011 Muppet movie era. He's once again got those smaller legs, which I think suits him very well. And there he is. Thank God it's it's in the bag. And that is Camilla, <laughs> the chicken. And uh, yeah, this is a standard Lego chicken piece by the looks of it. But it's adorned with the, the kind of mud bit chicken look. Gondol's doing some stunts today, which is very in character flying all over the place. Camilla's down. That works very nicely. There we go. Gonzo and Camilla. Um, yeah, Gonzo, one of the best Muppets. So yeah, Gonzo, one of the best Muppets. Can't really argue with that. And uh, there he is in all of his glory. I think the best representation of him uh, with Camilla, which is simple, straightforward, and nice, and very effective. So, moving on. And we are in the end game now, as we come to Miss Piggy. Yeah, I do want to say with Miss Piggy, I think it'd be cool if she came with a little white dog, um, in the manner that Camilla came with Gonzo, because that's technically a character, but they're very small. Instead, she just comes with a picture of herself. Which is, I don't know, I think it looks a bit odd being displayed. Because it's like, oh, look at this character holding a picture of that character. But I think this kind of adheres to Miss Piggy's recent dislikability. And the, the fact that the character is so um, self-centered. Also, I don't quite recognize the clothes that she's wearing. It's very vibrantly pink. I'm not sure exactly what film that it's from. But then again, she always wears different outfits, so it's very hard to kind of pinpoint down. But there she is. The head skull for this one is very big, because you've got all of the hair. Obviously the pig snout, and um, yeah. Makes for quite a bulky figure. No offence. So, I think this is pretty much the same piece as what Waldorf has. Or probably exactly, just with a different print. But I'll just, I'll put it like this, because I think that looks alright. There she is. On the base. And that is Miss Piggy. And finally, drum roll please, we have Herman the Frog in Lego form. Uh, I think anyone that's maybe not a Muppets fan would still love this figure, because it's a Lego rendition of one of the most iconic characters in media, I think. Um, or at least he used to be in his heyday. I think everyone still recognises Kermit the Frog, whether it be from his original prominence, or more recently in memes and stuff like that, for better or for worse. But um, after that dramatic build-up, there, he... Ugh, sorry, it's hair fever season. Okay, so, I remember Kermit's accessories. They are his iconic banjo, which I'm really happy about, and also a rainbow, which is of course in reference to the rainbow connection. Um, it is rather strange that Kermit holds a physical rainbow, because the one that we see in the original Muppet movie and stuff was just an actual rainbow. But um, yeah, so I bloody love this Kermit head. It's, um, it's wonderful. This one is probably closest resembles uh, Rolf's kind of head shape with that open mouth. You've got print on the inside, which has uh, you know the tongue, all the right colours, the eyes, 
There's no kind of defects by the looks of it. And even the head shape at the back and the neck that runs down, all perfectly done. So, that's a nice green van. It stopped. So, we'll put on Kermit's head. There we are. Oh, that looks brilliant. Oh, Kermit actually has the shorter legs, which is interesting. But he is a small character compared to like Piggy and Fozzie because, you know, he's a frog. Uh, as opposed to those other species. So. There's Kermit. I think Kermit just looks brilliant on his own because he is so just iconic in himself. There we go. I think that looks really nice. Um, and that's without the rainbow. You probably have to move this arm up to put that in because it seems like it would get in the way. I think we managed to uh, put it kind of that way, which works a lot better. It's not how it is in the promotional material, but uh, that's steady. And uh, that ain't going anywhere. The hand kind of slotted into the back directly. And that looks a lot better to me personally. So, here is Kermit the Frog. Okay, so here they all are, the collection of all 12 Muppet minifigures. As expressed throughout this video, the quality of these is really good. These genuinely should be fun to play with for younger Muppets fans, whilst collectors can really appreciate the detail that they possess. I can only hope that there is a Wave 2 in the future, as there's loads of cool characters that could be done. But what I want to know is what characters you want to see in a potential next wave down in the comments section below. I'm really looking forward to reading them. But I do want to mention that YouTube has added a brand new feature being the Super Thanks, which is a button you may see alongside the like and subscribe button. So this allows you to donate directly towards me and help to create more Muppets content in the future. But what separates the Super Thanks feature is that you're rewarded with a personalised, colourful comment that could appear at the top of this very video. Anyway, that is all from me, and thank you for joining me on this journey.